Sprouts. And today we're gonna read a story. Now, I really like this story because one, we could learn about, about different traditions, different cultures, and also we could enjoy a magical story. The story that we're gonna read today is the first strawberries is a Cherokee story. Now, before we continue reading this book, I wanna talk to you about a little bit about this. Now, uh, this story is a, a folklore. Now, what is folklore, Miss Rouse? A folklore is a traditional belief. It's a story of a community that, that was passed through the generations through generations by word of mouth. So somebody told a story and they were continue passing and passing and passing. Nobody was writing the story. Nobody was making the book. Everybody was talking about the story until one day somebody came and wrote a book. All right. Now, the story is about a Cherokee people. Now, who are who is a Cherokee people? Those ones are indigenous people that they live um, usually in the southeastern woodland of the United States. I'm going to share my screen to tell you exactly what part of the United States we are talking about. Here you could see that we have, especially in the mountain area, we have Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, especially in the mountain area. Now, the Cherokee people believe that they need to live in harmony with nature. The most important thing for them it was being in harmony and on peace with nature. So mainly all of the traditions that they have is being in harmony with it, happy with nature. Now, they believe that the God, that like the sun, was the main influence of all earth. So if they need something, they need to talk straight to the sun. And they respect the water, the land, the wind, everything around them, and especially the mountains. All right, now I'm gonna stop my screen and we're gonna talk a little bit about the book. Now, in this book, you could see the title, the first is Strawberry, a Cherokee story, and is retold by Joseph Burchak. Like I told you, he's not the author of the book. He's somebody that wrote a book, okay? Because he heard a story from the Cherokee people. That's the reason that it's a folklore. And he wrote a book so for us so we could have it and we could learn to it. And the pictures by Anne Bortech. She drew all the pictures about it. Now, here is the front of the book. This is the spine of the book. And this is the back of the book. Now, in front of the book, usually you're going to find the title, the person that wrote or retold the story, the person that, uh, the illustrator, uh, a picture about what is going to be. The, the book. In the spine of the book, usually you're going to find again the title and the writer and the illustrator. Now, the spine of the book is really important because it's like our spine. Thanks to our spine, we could move our head, we could move our arms. The same thing here. The spine of the book is really important so, because thanks to that, we could turn the pages. Now, in the back of the book, usually you're going to find a little bit of the illustration, but also you're going to find a summary, a little small summary about the book. Now, my first question for you, we could see here in the front of the book, a, a girl, a Native American girl, a Cherokee girl. She's picking up flowers. What do you think the story is going to be about? Do you think it's going to be about how she found the strawberries? How she planted the strawberries? What do you think? 
Well, we're gonna find out. But before that, I wanna do a little bit of picture walk with you. So please, I'm gonna share my screen so we could do some picture walk here. We have here the front of the book. Now, as soon as we turn the pages, in the first page, we could see how they were really happy and in harmony with, that, with, with nature. Everything was nice and we were happy with nature. The Cherokee people, we could see a house that is different from our house. It's really different. Now, when we turn in the page, we could see how she's cooking. She's peeling, what is that? Yes, that's corn. She's peeling some corn. We have here some fire. So maybe, maybe she's cooking. And him, we could see here that he's maybe preparing some arrows because he usually go for hunting, so he could provide some food for the house. In the next page, we could see how he's coming home or he's near the house. We could see the mountains. You see, they used to live in the mountains and they were living really happy. And she is picking up some flowers. Now, in the next page, we could see that he's angry. What do you think so he's angry? And here, she looks so beautiful with a flower. Now, in the next picture, we could see that she's just walking away and she threw some flowers away. We could see her with her Cherokee outfit and she's just walking through the sun, through the mountains. What do you think is going on? In the next picture, we could see that she's really far away and he's trying do you think he's trying to walk through her or maybe he's going to try to find something else? It's a really nice picture. It's a, a really nice view, but we don't know what is going on. She's walking through the mountains really far and he's so behind. Now, in the next picture, we could see that he, the guy, is talking to who? To the sun. Like I told you before, Cherokee people believe that the sun has all the answers. So maybe he's asking him something. In the next picture, we could see that she's walking and passing through a raspberry field. It looks delicious, but she's just walking through. She's not even looking to the raspberries, right? In the next picture here, we could see how she's walking through the blueberry area, blueberry field. And here in the next picture, she's just walking, passing, leaving behind the blueberries, the blackberries. Now, in this picture, do you think she found the strawberries? Look at her face. Do you think she looks happy? It looked like she found the strawberries. Maybe that was she was looking for. And now here we could see that the sun 
is really happy and is looking at her eating the, the uh, strawberries. Maybe she was asking the son to eat the strawberries. In the next picture, we could see that he found her. They are together and she's collecting what? Yes, some strawberries, you are right. And she looks happy, right? Now, the nine is coming and they are really happy sharing some strawberries to eat. And here we could see that the whole community, the whole Cherokee village is collecting some strawberries. The end. We have a really nice basket of strawberries. Now, now that we saw the picture walk, what do you think the story is going to be about? Well, it's time to find out. But first, I want that you sit straight, turn on your listening ears, follow through when I'm reading, and then I will ask you some questions. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm turn on this. I'm gonna share my screen so we could start reading. Mm -hmm. right. We're going to start reading the first strawberries retold by Joseph Burchek and pictures by Anna Vortage. Long ago, when the world was new, the creator made a man and a woman. The two of them were living, they were created together, so they will not be lost. They married, and for a long time, they lived together and were happy. Then, one afternoon, the man came home from hunting and found that the woman had not yet begun to prepare their meal. Instead, she was out picking flowers. The man grew angry I am hungry, he said in a cold voice. Do you expect me to eat flowers? Now, the wife too became angry. She had picked those flowers to share their beauty with her husband. Your words hurt me, she said. I will live with no, you no longer. She turned to the west and began to walk toward the sun. Her husband followed, but her steps were too quick. He could not catch her. 
He called her name, but she couldn't hear him. He went as fast as he could go, but his wife was much faster. The son watched as the husband followed her. The son saw how sorry the man was and took pity on him. Are you still angry with your wife? Asked the son. No, said the man. I was foolish to speak angry words, but I cannot catch her to tell her I am sorry. Then I will help you, say the son. The son shone his light down on the earth in front of the woman where its light shone raspberry grew up the berries were ripe and looked good to eat but the woman paid no attention to them and continued walking The sun try again. It shone down and blueberries grew. They glistered brightly in the sunlight, but the woman paid no attention to them. She only walked toward the west, leaving her husband farther behind. Now the sun tried a third time where its beam touched the earth, blackberries grew up. They were dark and plum, but the woman's anger was too much and she did not see them. At last, the sun tried his hardest. It shone its light down in the grass, right in front of the woman's feet. And a strawberries appeared. They glow like fire in the grass. And the woman had to stop when she saw them in front of her. She kneeled down and plucked one and bite into it. She had never tasted anything like it before. Its sweetness reminded her of how happy she and her husband had been together before they quarreled. I must gather some of these fruits for my husband, she said, and she began to pick the berries. She was still picking them when the man caught up to her. 
forgive me for my hard words, he said to her. And she answered him by sharing the sweetness of the strawberry. So it was that a strawberry came into the world. To this day, when the Cherokee people eat strawberries, they are reminded to always be kind to each other, to remember that friendship and respect are as sweet as the taste of a ripe red berries. The end. I really like this story. I hope. You like it too. Now, what was the problem in the story? And how was it solved? I know something happened between both of them. They were really happy, but something happened. And how it was solved? When we did a picture walk, we check all the pages and we guess what was going on in the story. Your guess was correct. You predict good what was going on with both of them. Now, I wonder you think, can you think of a different title for this story? What do you think so could be? And the last question is, did you like the end of the story? Why or why not? If you like the end of the story, what was your favorite part? Or what will you change? All right. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.